Hello, everybody, and welcome to this new episode of the CrossGen Podcast. Um, my name is Walt, and we are here with our normal crew. Guys, introduce yourselves. This is Darth AJ. This is Eli. And today we have a very, very special guest um, coming live from the unknown regions, uh, having blown up the Death Star before. We have the individual named Hero. Yeah. Hero. Thank you please. for having me. Yes, yes. Thank you for coming. Well, it was difficult from the outer rim. Well, listen, you got to take space whales, right? <laughs> if you understand that that thing. And that's going to be part of the, the topic that we're going to be talking about today. We're really going to be talking about Star Wars in the general, but in the specific, we're really going to drill down into what it is being a Star Wars fan and having to navigate all the different pieces of media to kind of try and get a full and complete c picture of the Star Wars universe. And I think, um, Hero, you're the one that kind of brought this to our attention. And so we're going to we're gonna talk about it today. Um, before we do, I just want to mention to everybody, thank you for coming and listening on to the podcast. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to the show if you love the show, which I know you do. And we are going to be, re we are recording remotely today because Hero is not part of our pod in the uh, coronavirus world right now. So he's, he's out someplace else. So he's uh, recording remotely. So if there are any sound artifacts that you hear, and we're hoping that there's not, but if there are, just know that it's kind of the price of doing business in this COVID-19 world. So, that being said, guys, let's talk Star Wars. Yeah. Right? Wars amongst the stars. Should I present my present conundrum? Absolutely. Hero, take it away. Okay. Uh, I'm a Star Wars fan. I wouldn't say that I'm the biggest Star Wars fans because, of course, this is a huge franchise with uh, fanatics, <laughs> let's say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I... But I would call myself a Star Wars fan, and I was watching The Mandalorian Season 2. Now, I know The Mandalorian is a popular show, but uh, spoiler warning, there is a character presented in Star Wars uh, The Mandalorian Season 2, and the moment I heard that this character was there, I thought, okay, what do I need to do to fully appreciate this character and her presence this character name again last minute spoiler warning yeah is ahsoka tano and when i heard that name i'm like wait that girl from that really old movie on <laughs> on cartoon network the 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 clone wars the, the clone, clone wars. wars yeah the clone movie. wars movie and then the clone wars show and I figured, wait a minute, what do I do? How do how do I completely appreciate this character? And it, it was a difficult process to discern. So I'm not entirely aware of who she is, what she thinks, why she thinks this. And I stopped watching The Mandalorian because of oh, it. Oh, that sucks. That yeah, really I hurts. stopped. I stopped watching The Mandalorian season two. I put it on hold because I needed to know who Ahsoka was because well, I understand she's such a fan favorite character. Let me put it to you this way, Hero. Um, if you're putting The Mandalorian on hold to try and find out who Ahsoka is, and if you're going to do it the way that it kind of should be done. You're going to be on hold for quite a bit because yeah. we're, we, Ahsoka is one of those characters that, like you said, was introduced in the Clone Wars movie way, way, way back when. Yeah. And was reintroduced in the Clone Wars animated series and continued her story in Rebels. We're talking about 13 seasons worth Right? Because well, Clone mean, Wars is seven. Yeah. And I believe Rebels is five. But I've only isn't... gotten to the first season of Clone Wars and technically haven't even finished it. 
Oh, and you know what? The first season of Clone Wars is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. And 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 the thing about it is that Ahsoka is such a central character to those properties that it kind of makes it difficult. And I, I feel your pain. It makes it difficult when you're you're running up against the Mandalorian and see Ahsoka there and you're like, who is this character? Not knowing her rich history. And and that that kind of that kind of does suck in many many different ways it's like watching the sequels without knowing who the hell darth vader is uh, who's darth vader Wait, what's who's that character that? who what oh, there's a man. he's an actual person <laughs> well the one thing i will say though is that ahsoka isn't there all throughout rebels she she was there for one season right. and then towards the very end so at least you have that buffer yeah that i didn't true. want to watch rebels because i'm like this i, I look at it and i'm like this sucks a con- con- controversial <laughs> opinion i suppose well but you know i what? kept I, to the i kept to the clone wars and i still I'll, haven't i still I haven't gotten this. anywhere i will say this hero um Rebels does take a while to really ramp up. That first season of Rebels is is not as good as the preceding the the fo- the seasons that follow afterwards. And it does ramp up, and it ramps up in very different and very important ways to the yes to the yeah. general mythology of Star Wars itself, especially that last season. Yeah, that last season was amazing. I would I would tell you hero that there is a three episode arc within the last season that is probably just as good if not better than some of the cinematic offerings that star wars has yeah. and, and i i really really do mean that it is that good yeah so you know rebels is a tough watch for the first season but once you really once they get started it really really gets interesting Wait, that was on Cartoon Network, right? That no, that was, was Disney XD, yeah, no? That was Disney XD. Hmm. By that time, it was full Disney. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's not like... It's not what you think yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not what you... Yeah, it's it really like Voltron, not. right? Yeah, Voltron. It's like Voltron. Voltron took its... The, the new Voltron on Netflix yeah. took its time to gain its footing, but once it did, it was off and running. Yeah. Um... I feel your pain because, and this is a gripe that I've had on our other podcast, which is the Get Geek podcast, right? Where, you know, for the Uber fan, it, it is it is awesome seeing all these properties kind of melt together and stuff. You know, you can you can gain information from the comic books, from the books, from the audio podcast, from you know TV, from movie. There's 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 a lot that's there um but kind of like you you know for the for the fan that really loves star wars but doesn't have the time to invest in all of these things that's where i think disney is kind of doing a disservice because you know it, it ahsoka tano is is a very interesting character and in the mandalorian as it is but you don't get the full sense of who she is unless you know the other things you know, and that's a shame. That really is, you know, because there's a lot of people that just want to watch the movies and say, you know what, this is fine. And, you know, now that Disney Plus is out, they want to be able to watch the show and say this is cool. But, you know, again, it's almost kind of like inside baseball, right, where it's, um, you know, you have to watch three series, two comic books, read the books, listen to the audio book. Um, Go and, and get the Star Wars encyclopedia from Barnes and Nobles if that still exists. You know, <laughs> you see and, that's and, what's and that's what's that... happening with Halo right now, where there's so much. Every piece of media is suddenly starting to become important, and so in order to understand the core, you have to understand everything else. One of my biggest fears is that they will involve uh, Disney will involve. I believe his name is Cal Kestis from yes, the yeah. from the show. 
not the show, the video game. Mm-hmm. And so they'll force you to buy or watch a $60 piece of media. And and think about that. That's $60 for one movie, let's say. And then $120 later for uh, an episode that slightly references him. It's It's absurd. It's absurd. I think it's it may eventually just become price gouging on a large scale. You you can't even say you you can't even argue a defense for children, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because Star Wars has become and I'm glad it's become for everyone, but it's become for everyone with deep pockets. Yeah, it's really seeming like that nowadays. Like, uh, you know, n- just to build off that too, Godzilla actually started going into that realm too. Remember yeah. the other day I was talking about uh, some of the implications for Godzilla versus Kong, and then I started referencing comic books that I didn't even read that are probably going to play a part in the movies. <laughs> oh, damn. Everything's becoming... Every, everything's becoming very increasingly commercial with with some of these properties you know which which is listen i guess it's their right but it, as fans as casual fans especially it does make it difficult especially and hardcore fans as well because like you said you got to drop nearly half a fortune to be able to keep up with all this stuff and you have to have the time to do it it's fine to commercialize off of certain things especially media properties you know it takes a lot of effort to create a good story and a lot of time to create a good character. As someone trying to create media, I, you know, I personally recognize that. Mm-hmm. But when you start gouging every single bit, my biggest, what's it? I had said my biggest fear for Star Wars, but my biggest fear for media especially hearing now that Godzilla's doing this or at least the kaiju verse yeah people uh... will abandon it well, the I mean... consumer the consumer is smart it's the same reason that Star Wars Battlefront was attacked for or Battlefront 2 was attacked for its loot boxes mm-hmm. so people will eventually abandon bad media take a look at uh halo the master chief collection (laughs) try playing a game of warzone you will not find it i know i didn't so when i looked at the classic disc of halo reach and i just looked for a normal game or even some of the more niche style game modes those are still running because it's a good piece of media that the consumers wanted and it's not gouged to the point where you have to pay for what the equivalent for Disney would be uh, each episode or each season. It, it's quite terrifying. You, know, you don't want yeah. you don't want Star Wars to die simply because of bad commercial choices. You you yeah, want Star I, Wars to live on. You want to be a happy fan who's proud to spend that sixty dollars. I mean that's true, but I can also see at the same time the want to expand. I mean, look at People have wanted the Kenobi series for, like, how long now? And it's finally happening! Yeah, but, like, that's mainly, like, fans and stuff, right? Because, well, chances are, if if you're not a fan, I guess you could sort of walk into that. But even still, it's like, it's like more fan service keeps coming out. Like, you have Darth Maul in Han Solo, in Solo. Mm-hmm. And and see that's that's one of the things that I think um, Hero here is probably going to point to and say you know what the heck was this about because if you don't watch 
the cartoons, the last time you saw Darth Maul, he was getting he got chopped in half, yeah. and there was no yeah. indication that he he survived. And so to see him in Solo, right at the very end, you know there was a lot of people. I I, I remember because you know I didn't know that that was going to happen, and I, I everybody knows that I'm a huge Maul fan. That's like one of my favorite characters in Star Wars. And to me, what they did in the animated series is made him such a rich and important character to the Star Wars universe that nobody knows about. Yeah. Unless you watch the show, you do not understand how how Maul connects to everything. Yeah, so right? like 50% I think- of... And then, and then I remember when Solo came out and I got online and I didn't even know that he had a, a cameo, you know. Um, you know, one of my friends was like, I can't wait to, to see your reaction when you see it. And he, he was like, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but just let me know what happens, right? And I nearly fell out of my chair. But that same night, I remember going online and there were tons of questions on the forums, on, you know, IGN, you know, explainer videos and things of that, how Maul is alive. And, and to me, you know, that kind of that kind of does a disservice to the people that want to get into Star Wars, but then are ultimately confused because they don't have that that knowledge, you know. I think and, it's and- important that we clarify this, the the Obviously, you can commercialize things. Obviously, hey, listen, it's can. their right. They own yeah, the it's, it's their right. They're right. Absolutely. Uh, it encourages creating good media. Create good media, people will pay for it. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's the problem isn't so much that isn't so much that you need to consume every piece of media because that's not true. You don't need to watch solo in order to understand Han Solo. It's a sort of extended universe type thing, or an expanded universe, uh, depending on your phrasing. Right. But when that ceases to become an extended universe, and it becomes part of the core universe, mm-hmm. it, That's where uh, you like you said, it's confusing. That's where the you MCU... Problem. I bring up the MCU because they've recently had Endgame. And now they're going into a sort of extended universe. Now they're having WandaVision. Uh, Now they're having other series, which I doubt will be necessary. Actually. Yeah. Oh, is Disney screwing up that too? Yes. Oh, boy. WandaVision becomes required um, watching because it directly affects the next um, Doctor Strange movie. That's and it. damn, yeah, it does. And there's a character on that show that previously was focused was shown in another movie, and she gains her powers in this show. And there is a storyline that potentially can open up an entire new universe with, within the MCU. So WandaVision is very important. I would say it's required required watching if you want to continue with the MCU. Now, um, besides Disney+, Plus, I think that they're taking a much more relaxed version of commercializing right. Marvel. Do you think that that's just a reaction to COVID-19 halting everything that is uh, the everything that is closing well, cinema and theater um i i would would the, would specifically to the MCU i would say no because this was this was a remember MC, uh, disney went ahead and bought fox for the very specific reason is that they wanted some of their properties back, but they also wanted the Fox properties as well. And and the main reason was because they were looking to open up their own streaming service. That's that that was kind of the driving force behind, you know, buying Fox Studios and their properties. 
because they needed content and you can't and Disney is a, a pretty big brand in terms of content but they needed more if they were going to compete with the likes of Netflix and Hulu which they they own but you know things like uh, Amazon Prime and stuff they needed an entire catalog and you see it now with every single studio out there Paramount is is coming out with Paramount Plus Universal has their own thing. CBS yep. has all access. NBC now has Peacock. They're all building these streaming services. And so Disney said, you know what? We need to not only gain a bunch of pre-made content, but the trick is we're going to have to make new content to make people come back. It's kind of like the way Netflix does. So mm-hmm. this was this was something that they had planned. They had planned this with the star wars universe they had planned this with the mcu universe so this was always in their mind this is um an extension of the cinematic universe so but they're the thing is they're tying it all in which is something that they really didn't do before because they did have shows like agents of shield they did have the netflix universe that had punisher and daredevil you know luke cage and jessica jones but those were very, very loosely based on the MCU. They made brief mentions, and they never ma- even mentioned the characters by name. Rest I in peace, um, Daredevil. Yeah, exactly. Well, he might be coming back, but yeah. hey. We, Ooh, I hope. We, know, we don't know. But even those series were very loosely based within the, the, the Marvel Universe. They, you know, they referenced the Battle of New York a lot. They, me- they mentioned the big green guy, you know. The, the God, they never mentioned them by name, but now they're taking these series and they're directly connecting them to the MCU. So this is, this is more of a, a very focused conscience decision to say, you know what, we are building the streaming service. How do we make this appealing to people? Well, we'll put in shows based on the properties that they already love and say, well, if you want to know what, what continues to happen, in the MCU, you really got to go on to Disney Plus because WandaVision, um, Loki, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, they directly tie into the movie universe. They What happens in these shows have direct implications to the cinematic universe. So I think this was more of a, again, business decision to tie these two things together. How have they managed to pull this off? Lots I mean, of obviously, money. yeah, obviously they have the funding to start it. They have the funding to create. In, they have the funding to create more content, to create media, be it through TV series. Uh, I'm not even sure you can call it a TV series anymore, considering how it's just streaming. You can watch it anywhere. But through series, through movies, how is it that we didn't see this coming? Well, I, 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 I think we kind of did yeah. see it. Though. Yeah, you know, I, I think they they had they had made their intentions pretty pretty apparent at the beginning. Um, especially when they were building this out and especially when they saw how Netflix was really dominating, uh, you know, the streaming side of things and, you know, say what you will about COVID and anything and everything, but you know, the cinematic piece of it was kind of movies in general, the movie industry in general is not the same that it was maybe 10 to 15 years ago. Because now the movie industry is really, truly dominated by just blockbusters. There's really, it's very, very rare rare where you see an indie film become a big hit. Indie films generally tend to stay indie films. And blockbusters generally tend to stay blockbusters. And there's really no in-between right now. So, you know... um, I, I think what, what was happening is that they were kind of reading the tea leaves and saying, you know what, a lot of people are investing, you know, in homes and, and you know, they're building out home theaters and stuff. We've got to find a way to reach out to them. And listen, Disney right now has done a fantastic job because as, as of right now, they have 95 plus million subscribers. 
and this thing is about what a year old yeah that is pretty impressive so they knew what they were doing you know and they executed it very well it's odd because i remember a time we're hearing that darth maul is alive was incredibly exciting Mm-hmm. And now we're hearing also props to Sam Witwer for that voice acting. Beautiful. Uh, heard, also, heard, bring us back for Unleashed. <laughs> you heard what they did to him, right? Though, unfortunately. Oh, my. What happened? Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, with Rebels? Are you about to break my heart? Maybe. Well, you know, he, he plays multiple roles in the Star Wars universe, right? Uh, so, yes, he had played a role a long, a long time ago, back in a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away that is no longer canon. Yeah, but there was also a very important thing in the animated cartoons. He was also the voice of Emperor Palpatine, and spot on, mind you. Um, but when when Disney took over and Disney started you know, thinking about the Disney Plus service, they actually brought in the original actor, Ian McDermott. Yeah. And had him redo the lines. So they they effectively took Sam Whitworth's work and kind of threw it out the window and brought in the original actor that was the Emperor and redid all of his lines in all of the shows. So Is there uh, anything else? No, that's it. But I mean, I I have I, a feeling that Sam Witwer wouldn't. I mean, I don't want to speak for Sam Witwer, but mm-hmm. Sam seems like a genuine Star Wars fan. Oh, absolutely. This man is. You know, if if you listen to him on the po- on the podcast that he goes on, and you know, he does little bits for StarWars dot com and stuff. This man knows his Star Wars. He is. He is. A treasure trove of knowledge when it comes to Star Wars. Wasn't he the one who, in the Solo movie, said, "Wait, you're putting in this lightsaber? No, this is the Absolutely. wrong lightsaber." Yep, he had he he played a, a big part in making sure that Darth Maul Maul. I'm sorry, not Darth Maul because he's not a Darth anymore. But Maul Ooh, in Solo, yeah, he's he's just Maul. He's not Darth Maul. He lost that that title once. Um, well, Darth I'm, Vader, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna get into it, but yeah, he, he lost that title. Um, but during the solo movie, you know, they were going to bring in the original double bladed lightsaber, and Whitwer had the the presence of knowledge to say, you know what, you guys aren't watching the show. He no longer uses that lightsaber. He uses this one, and they made the change. So this guy knows his stuff. He really, really does. I'm pretty sure that, you know, even though it was kind of like, and part of my French, everybody, a dick move by Disney to to kind of recast his role. Um, I'm pretty sure he understood knowing that it's Ian McDermott that's doing it and it's not just some other guy, you know. But it still kind of sucks that, you know, they did that to him. I want to hear both of their... Uh, He's really feelings. good. He's really good. You would not You would not know the difference. That's how good he is. Damn. Um, what's it? Well, he is a voice actor, and he does do tabletop RPGs. We know that much. Yes, he does. I th- no. When you said that um, everybody was excited for Darth uh, Darth Maul being alive, right? Mm-hmm. I think they're... Maul, Maul, Maul. Sorry. I think that there was a way to do it they they obvious it's obviously what's done is done right but yeah they executed it wrong if you were gonna if you were gonna do something like that i wouldn't just have it as an as like some sort of what was it after credit scene no 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 no. it was it was in the movie so even but at the very very end even worse If, if you were to do something like that you would need honestly for me at least what i'm thinking is Go into his backstory. Um, yeah. Maybe in like the Obi, Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh, I really hope that they do that. Yeah, you know what they should have done. <laughs> what they should have done, because I I don't remember where I read this, but I know you told me about this, or someone on the podcast told us about this. The original intention 
was to have Maul be the overarching villain for the sequel trilogy. Yes. Oh my, that how that would lost. be smart. Yeah. How that would be cool and smart, and they killed him off in Rebels. But well, still. Then again, you get, we did a, a podcast where Jar Jar Binks was supposed to be the yes. overarching villain, also, right? He is Darth Plagueis. No, he's <laughs> he's not already Plagueis. the he's already the overarching villain of Star Wars. That is Every true. fan yeah. hates him. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand how you can be so hateable. Well, if you look at all the stuff that he's done, you know, he was the one that directly, <laughs> directly um, <laughs> caused the the fall of you know the um we said give emergency powers yes, thank to you. the chancellor <laughs> um, it, it, everything is dark is jar jar binks fault i was about to say darth jar jar <laughs> yes everything is jar jar binks fault words. <laughs> so um uh, what do you, what do you think Star Wars and Disney in particular has to has to do going forward, or do you think they do anything? I I don't think they'll do anything. I think that commercially this is a brilliant move. However, what I'd like to see is simply the inclusion of simply a soft inclusion. That's that's what they should do in the same fashion that the MCU did when it gr- when it was growing into Endgame uh Captain America Civil War it should have been an Avengers movie in my belief because of everyone it included but it was a soft inclusion and going forward in that cinematic universe there were references to the what's it to the past films you didn't have to see the past films in order to understand these characters now as far as ahsoka tano and where that's going in the mandalorian i just want to appreciate the character well let me let me ask you this question because because there there is a there is a path that i see that they can take this for the people that really don't understand who ahsoka is you know Oh, might i also ask sure sure of course bo katan was she a part of any of the animated series? Probably a part of the Clone Wars oh and Sprinkle in Rebels and now the Mandalorian. Now I have to watch the entirety of Clone Wars yeah. to appreciate Bo Katan because I'm like, oh, Bo Katan, you sound like a badass. I wonder if you were anywhere. And, and oh, you haven't you haven't seen the the whole thing yet. Oh, but no, you saw season. You saw the end of season one, so. That that lightsaber. Yeah, that's um, that's a heavily that's a heavily prized Mandalorian treasure. That's also in Clone Wars. In Clone Wars, <laughs> I the whole can't... the whole backstory of that that and Rebels that, too. <laughs> that is actually big. That is actually big in terms of um, the history of Mandalore, and it's also big in some of the events that happen in the Mandalorian as well as well. So. Um, and so now I have to watch it in order to understand. I mean, of course it's an extended universe, right? Of course you can call Clone Wars an extended universe, but they're never contained properly within one another. And that's that's why I had spoken about the soft inclusion. They're never contained within one another. Well, it's they always yeah. They- they did also do it in Rogue One too. That's in, true. In Rogue One, they had the character played by Forrest Whitaker, Saw Guerrera. He was also in Clone Wars. <laughs> oh <laughs> he's, my! He's, he's the actually, very first yes. one they took from the shows to the movies. Yes, he was the first character that actually made the jump from the animated uh, Star Wars universe onto the cinematic Star Wars universe. So. They've been they've been building this up for quite a while, and they've been they've been wrapping these things together. And you know, it's it's important to understand and note that you know the showrunners that do the Mandalorian. Uh, one of them is John Favreau, who's a huge Star Wars fan, but the other one, and more importantly, 
the other one that works with him is is a, a gentleman named Dave Filoni. And I've been a big fan of Dave Filoni for a long time. Um, anybody that knows me will, will tell you that. He is he is basically the guy that, you know, before, you know, the purchase of Disney, he was the one that was being groomed by George Lucas to take his place. You know, he started out as an intern and, you know, ever since then, you know, he, they they kind of grew together. And there was a point where wherever George Lucas was, Dave Filoni is, you know, they were kind of joined at the hip. So he has probably out of anybody on the planet has, aside from George Lucas, has an infinite knowledge of the Star Wars universe. But it's interesting to note, he is also the co-creator of both Clone Wars and Rebels. And Ahsoka Tano is... Uh, a character that he created specifically for those shows. So to see the inclusion of these characters now into the, the movie space is not that big of a leap knowing that he is, you know, intimately involved in these properties now, you know? I don't, I don't exactly know if you were going to say this before, uh, but there is a solution. I was going to talk about Ahsoka Tano in Ahsoka terms Tano. of a solution, but what's your what's your what's your opinion for the Mandalorian? Mm -hmm. All of the stuff, Ahsoka Tano, Bo Katan, the Dark Saber miniseries, another one. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Further commercialization, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I, it, it's well, yeah, but compared to what we currently have, it's yeah. a little bit better. They didn't stick the landing with Maul. But they still have an opportunity to do some things with both Bo Katan, Kreese, and Ahsoka Tano because the way they introduced them, um, there was some hint at their past, right? But they didn't focus specifically on it during the episodes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so there is a chance that you can say that, oh, look, here's these characters, kind of like the way. The MCU did it when they introduced Black Panther. Black Panther kind of came out of nowhere, right? He didn't have mm -hmm. any any backstory. He just showed up on Civil War, and then they did a movie afterwards kind of explaining who he is, what his path was, was how he became who he was. They have an opportunity to do that with these two characters, in my mind. You know? So like an Ahsoka collection? Right. A Mandalorian connection? Well, I... We, they'd have to rename it, but um, a dark saber collection. I think I think they have, or even even if they can have, like maybe, you know, um, another like a mini series, like Eli said, where it's like, okay, we introduced this character in the Mandalorian. If you thought that the person was interesting, here's a little mini series where you can say, hey, check it out. Take a look at this person. Here's kind of their backstory. That's a way that you can do it. The only problem is, is that that story has already been told in the animated cartoons. But if you do it right, you can still honor that, right? Hmm. And, and inform the people that aren't willing to spend seven seasons watching a show, you know, to find out who this person is. At least that's what I think. It reminds me a lot of the Halo Legends series. And I know that the Halo Legends series of short cool. anime films were... I forgot about those. Oh, I love it. I always watch Prototype. Be human, my fellow fans. <laughs> <laughs> those, those, mini, those mini animes... I don't want to call them anime. Those mini anime films told their own stories, but... If you take a look, one of the first thing it starts is with Origins 1 and 2. And they're telling summaries of things most fans already know. So if you want to know Origins 1, suddenly you don't have to study the Flood. You know what the Flood are. And so you can pop right into Halo 3. Or you can pop right into Halo 4, even though it's not the best game. And understand who the forerunners are. Yeah. So if you did something, if Disney could do something like that, where 
they have a retelling. Even if it's the same scenes just ripped out of the show and provided with uh, either a narrative or their own little their own little thing because yeah, Dis- disney can story. do that we have an entire obi-wan uh movie is it a movie or a series it's a but regard it's a series but regardless it's coming out and there's so much potential with obi-wan because he was stuck on tatooine looking after luke for lord knows how long it's yeah, but, they uh, could do that yeah, so what I was, I actually just remembered something. So Disney a while back came out with something called Forces of Destiny. Yes. Oh, you they remember did. that? They were little YouTube shorts. And remember, they would also sometimes do retellings of the original movies. Why don't you have those particular things? Like, well, they had some of Ahsoka Tano, but not like the real juicy bits that everyone knows her for. Right. Like they had, they had, I think, with one bit where she meets Princess Leia, right? Yeah, or Padme. Some, oh, Padme, one of, one of those two. Yeah. But, like, if they could revamp that to retell parts of Clone Wars, like, it'll be a season just recapping Clone Wars and Rebels or whatever the heck is going to be heavily tied into the series coming up. That would be killer. Yeah, but that. Here's my problem with that. You said recap Clone Wars, right? Recap what needs to be known. But here's the thing. That's still a lot of information. Even what needs to be known. That's I'm, not you sure. Can... No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I could entirely agree with that uh, as far as a lot of information. Because if you focus solely on... If you focus solely on what's being told, you don't have to... You, there are certain areas where you don't have to provide context. Yeah, if you say the dark anyway. saber, what's yeah. it? The dark saber was a Mandalorian treasure, and you see people fighting over it. You can incentivize people to watch Clone Wars because you can see there is there are more stories surrounding the dark saber. But otherwise, here is what it. Otherwise, here is the. Here is what it is. You can. You don't have to contextualize it. You simply have to explain it, and so if you explain Ahsoka Tano, and all of her struggles, everything she had to go through, um, I don't know if there's any mirror image between her and Asajj Ventress. But you know if if you can say that um st- uh, struggling under a Jedi master turned Sith lord um trying to fully understand herself or whatever her plot lines are you don't have to tell the plot line you simply have to do a little spark notes of it and at that point what's it i've it's like the back of a book if you ever take a look at the back of a book it will sort of advertise itself um long live the king hailed blah blah upon publication of stephen king's on writing it's advertising itself memoir of the craft for anyone curious stephen king on writing the the book it is advertising itself on the back that's all that these things have to do these little mini series these little uh small episodes yeah, advertise the dark saber advertise ahsoka tano let us know who these people are and then tell us tell us or allude to the series that they're in i guarantee you people will want to watch the series that they're in if you can tell us how cool they are it's if- interesting it's interesting that you say that and and 
one thing, and it made me do something just right now while you were talking. And so I, I don't know if, if people are aware, but um, the app Marvel Unlimited, it's, a, it's an app where you, uh, you pay a monthly fee, obviously, right? But you get, you get basically the entire Marvel comic collection at your fingertips, right? Um, the only thing, the only caveat is that uh, the the new titles are held back for six months before they go on to that service, right? One thing though that they really, really do very well is that not only do they have the titles, but they have a section on the app itself that says, "Well, if you want to know more about Civil War, these are." the comic books you want to read. If you want to know more about the Scarlet Witch, these are the, you know, the required readings and stuff like that. And so as you were talking, I, I just decided to jump onto Disney Plus on my on my phone, the mobile version. And if you go on to the Star Wars section, there is a a part. And I, I think they need to expand it, but I think it's kind of what you were touching upon, their hero where there's a section in there where it, they they have it labeled Ahsoka, Ahsoka Tano Essential Episodes. And what they do there is that they list 16 episodes from both The Clone Wars and Rebels, and they have it right there for you, you know, in um, chronological order, I, I, I would imagine, right? So I guess that they are trying to do that in a way, what you just what you just mentioned, where it's like, okay, well, if you want to know more about this character, these are the places you need to find it. They, it looks like they're doing that, but I don't think they're doing enough of it. Because, like I said, I checked on the app. That is the only instance. So for the people who want to know more about the Darksaber, the people that want to know more about Bo-Katan, Maul, want to know more about Maul, those things are not there. Unlike in the Marvel Universe, you Unlimited app, they do have it where it's like, okay, if you want to know more about Moon Knight or, you know, World War Hulk or the House of M, these are the, the, the comic books that you want to read to find out more about that. I think that's what Disney Plus needs to do as well. They need to they kind need of to do start to break it down. Right, exactly. Because right now, the entire Star Wars thing, they have all this stuff. There's only one section devoted to that. They need, there's so many characters that they have that int are interspersed between all these media properties, these mediums and stuff like that. You need to do this for the average fan. Why isn't there a section talking about Mandalorians? Exactly. Like I found the Ahsoka Tano essentials, but there's a Vader collection, but that's basically the entire film series. Exactly. <laughs> so where are... And they touch upon the they touch upon the history on the in the cartoons, and it's a very rich history. You know, there's a lot of things that you could you can gain from watching that, so that when you do go into the Mandalorian, you have some some knowledge to start out with. You're not starting from zero. Yeah, I I can't. I mean, as someone who started from zero, essentially save for watching having watched the films it's it's exciting and difficult to understand where these people lie and why they lie that way i am i'm actually really upset by this like i'm, I'm glad there's a essential episodes list but I also pulled one from the internet, oh. and I had I felt the need to pull one from the internet simply because this isn't this isn't on the first page. Right. Exactly. I mean, even and even if you go to the Star Wars page, that's the only one that exists. It'd be interesting to see what if that list that you pulled from the internet matches up to what's on oh. Disney Plus. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious. I'd be curious to see what a fan's perspective is of essential episodes as opposed to Disney's version of essential episodes. It'll be interesting to kind of match these two side by side. It, it'd be telling in my, in my mind. 
you know. To solve the problem where it's not on the first page, what if you have like a, a thing for the Disney Plus app? Because that's the only way to watch The Mandalorian, right? Yes. Let's say you're like, maybe you're starting the, the show, right? Maybe you can have like a recommended series sort of thing where it just like pops up. Kind of like what they do with WandaVision. WandaVision, what's the, what's the thing that they keep showing after <laughs> every episode? Age, Age of, of Ultron. Ultron. Oh. And Age of Ultron is super tied into WandaVision. They should be doing the exact same thing. You know, they, there, has, there should be an algorithm that once you watch the, the Mandalorian, a specific episode, it says, well, based on the events that happen in this episode, you can go watch this in Clone Wars or this in Rebels. It's and I don't know if they do that. So far, it sounds like Marvel's getting preferential treatment, if you ask me. Hmm. Nah. And that that's... Honestly? I think I found an image of Bo-Katan. Who, who's Bo-Katan's actress? The actress oh. that plays the... Oh, yeah, the live actress. Yeah, I, um, I love her. She came from, also the she came from Battlestar Katie, Galactica. Katie Sackhoff. Yeah, Katie Sackhoff. She's actually the voice actress of the character in the show. Oh my god, really? Yep. Starbuck, love you. Yeah. Um, I I don't know if you know the history behind her, but you know she she plays she's played Bo Katan since you know the the character was introduced into in the um, Clone animated, Wars. Yeah, into Clone Wars. And so when they they were thinking about bringing her into the Mandalorian. She said, you know what? It's a piece of cake because I play the character, right? But the, mm-hmm. the problem that she had, and this is kind of a little, a little inside information that, I, that I, I read on the internet. The problem that she had when she was asked to play the live action is that she's very animated with her hands. And that's something that if you watch the show, she, the character is not. So while it was easy for her to step into character mentally, Physically, she had a very, very difficult time trying to mimic, you know, the the mannerisms of the character on live TV. And so, you know, if you, if you listen to her, she said that was one of the biggest struggles that she had translating the character from animation to live action was not the man, not the the inflection of the voice, not you know the she knew the character inside out. It was just the physicality of the character that she had the toughest time translating it. So you know that's that's quite the coincidence, and I think that that's a common problem among, amongst voice actors. Um, oh, now I feel sad. I don't know. Mark Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. Why couldn't I remember that? Mark Hamill has a very similar problem, or actually. Uh, a sort of liberty when voice acting the Joker yeah. because he can do whatever the hell he wants with his hands. Right. Needs needs to pull back on some <laughs> Katie needs to pull back some Battlestar Galactica. There you go. Um so I want I want a Star Wars encyclopedia if this is really how they're going to do this like a master encyclopedia yeah and it should be in disney plus because if they're going to pull an extended universe that is so necessary to the core universe and the cinematic universe eventually because that's where it's going to go that's where we're already seeing tidbits the extended universe, yeah, you're going to need to watch that in order to watch the core universe and understand things. We saw that in Halo 5. We're going to see it in other media, too. Wow, they had that for Halo 5? Yeah, you had, unless you played Spartan Ops entirely or some other thing, you wouldn't understand why some people are missing arms, uh, why they are who they are or where they are. Oh. Yeah, it's in it's in the opening scene, Doctor Halsey. 
Uh, but I guess I didn't notice that because I didn't really have any investment for Halo Five. Yeah, no one he, did. It's okay. He hates. He hates Halo Five. Yeah. Same, same here. So, so um, you you know it? what you just done though, right? What? If there's any Disney executives listening to this podcast, you just gave them the perfect opportunity for them to create an, a, a new app and say, "Hey, guess what? For the low price of nine ninety nine a month, <laughs> you can understand what's happening." Yes, check this out. You this know what's the sad? Star Wars Compendium app. You know what's Download sad? it today. <laughs> They do that for Halo Five. They do that for Halo. What's the What's the app? Whenever you find uh, in oh, Halo Waypoint, Halo, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, Waypoint? Halo Waypoint. Why is that? What? <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> what? If I want to go look up something in Witcher Three, CD Projekt Red, fix your act. If I want to look up something in Halo Three. <laughs> Uh, pardon me, Witcher 3, I can just find it. And that's in a load of games. That's in the new Star Wars game too, where they have a sort of, I don't, not a rubric, but a list of descriptions that all explain what and who and where. And it makes sense. Well, that for goes for most RPGs. For the low price of nine ninety nine a month, you can no. you too can get that experience, or you can go to lo- your local Barnes and Nobles and pay fifty dollars for the hardcover edition. <laughs> it's it's absurd, and to anyone listening to this, to anyone listening to this, this this is my little fucking tower call before I die. <laughs> I get that it's the commercial versus the consumer, and those two can be married together in a very happy in a very happy uh, couple. We need to start putting a leash on Disney. They need a collar, and obviously, because they own so many properties and because they make good media out of, say, Marvel, that's great. But we can't let them start killing Star Wars as a sort of sacrificial lamb. They need to be watched. Do you know it's, that oh, we sorry. can't if if there is poor practice on the on Disney as a company or on how Disney handles Star Wars, they need to fix it. If we can get Sonic the Hedgehog to look the way we want him to, <laughs> then we can do that with Disney. That was pretty Disney bad. Disney and all corporations are afraid of losing their consumers because that means they're losing their money, they're losing their shareholders. That's the same thing that's happening to CD Projekt Red. You can take a look at how their stocks were managed after... Um, the release of Cyberpunk. Oh, God, they dropped. That was horrible. That was yeah, horrible. they dropped. Why? Because Cyberpunk sucked. And because people were afraid of CD Projekt Red and where they were going. You know, I actually bought that, that game and I had my I'm money so refunded. Sorry. No, I, I had my money refunded to me. So yeah. it, it wasn't so bad. But and it, people got scared of CD Projekt Red and their, and how volatile they became. Because they didn't know if they could trust them to make good games. Well, right now, at this moment, we cannot trust Disney to make good Star Wars media or content without some absurd context or price. Well, I we need I, to begin telling them no and control and control the consumer base. I, I will say this. As part of it. I, I yeah. will say this. The the sequel trilogy was a, a complete It was a disaster. Disaster. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it, and listen, it, as much as it hurts me as a as a Star Wars fan to say it, I, I you know, there is there is truth to that. It was it was poorly managed. There was no one person, there was no one Kevin Feige that was overseeing it. Kathleen Kennedy, you can say, was kind of like the author of that shit but clearly there was there was no one person that was overseeing it but i i will have to say this the series that they have made so far 
have been very good. So at least on one side of the medium, they, they seem to have their act together. On the other side, they need help. And, and I don't know at this point what their plans are because I, I believe that um, Ryan Johnson still has his, oh his trilogy that's coming up. They, they haven't said no. He did mention that uh, in an interview that it might it's still on the plate. Nothing has been done so far, but it's still, you know, they haven't taken it off the calendar. Um, I believe Kevin Feige has a Star Wars movie coming out. Um, what's his name? Um, the guy from Thor Ragnarok. Oh, yeah. Taika Waititi? Taika Waititi yeah. has, has a, 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 a Star Wars movie coming out. And when I hear that stuff, it's exciting for me to hear because of the, the people that are involved. But then it scares me at the same time because, again, it seems like we're kind of going with this, well, you make your own movie, and then I'm going to make a movie, and it's going to sort of intersect with your movie, but I'm not really using your movie as a base, as a base for yes. what the story that I'm trying to tell. You know, and that's the thing that scares me on the, the movie side of things. And I think with the, the TV series there, they've got a pretty good thing. Yeah. Eli, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Um, I, re- I genuinely feel that this is a problem for a lot of networks. I think DC suffers from oh, that. I was yeah, just going to say that. DC suffers from that. Oh, my God. The animated yeah. films are so much better. And then I it's hear, not- oh, yeah. Uh, I think they screwed up one animated film. Yeah, that was, really uh, that was the, uh, the Killing Joke. No, not that. No, that was good. no, the Killing Joke was the Killing Joke was pretty good. Besides, the one they messed up was that one storyline you that you like, Hush, Hush. Oh, oh yes, that one. Hush, Hush and was then good. Apocalypse War was complete and utter garbage. Yeah, but listen, every they're they're entitled to make mistakes every once in a while. But for the but, for the most part, they're animated. I'll give them movies that. have been far superior than their cinematic ones. Yeah. We'll see how well the Snyder Cut works. And also that's an example of fam, fans uh, demanding something and it actually working. I'm generally excited for that. The Snyder Cut? I'm, yeah. I'm so-so. I'm just glad we get a fixed Superman face. That's it. That's all I need. <laughs> I'll re-watch it even if it's garbage. Well, that's... F- Four four hours and change, if you're gonna rewatch it. So, it's, eh. it's a long movie. Yeah, I th- I'll I'll, I'll take that. Go I'll take that if it's a, even if it's Aquaman quality. And I didn't. I fell asleep during Aquaman. So, what? <laughs> yeah, I was I was very surprised at how slow the beginning was. Oh Wait. no. I'll- off topic question, right? What about Wonder Woman eighty four? I, I don't. Oh, that's garbage. Thank you. <laughs> that's garbage. Thank you. Okay, it was so unnecessary all... and it was bad contextually. We're all in agreement on that, then. Yeah. Yep. Horrible. <laughs> yes, it was. I thought it was horrible. Yes, it was. It was bad. Fan outcry. There's a reason that people have PR agencies or a PR agent. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. We're in control of that. <laughs> well, misstep, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely a misstep. I think I think Warner Brothers is being well handled. I think that we're giving D. Uh, pardon me. I think that we're giving Disney way too many. I think that we're being way too apologetic to Disney. And how it's and how it's handling the extended universes how it's handling everything it always begins it always begins bad but it never continues bad and that's because they take a look at what the fans say yeah that's true you know helicopter favors and and the good thing the good thing is that they've 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 understood not to really mess with the mcu because the MCU, by and large, is really its own thing cinematically. Now they're bringing in a TV, but I think they'll have a hard time 
trying to put that into comic book form and things of that nature just because of the fact that they have an entire comic book division to deal with. So yeah. I don't think they'll ever mess around with that. So I Have think- you heard of the new heroes? Uh, pardon me. I think they're called the new warriors. The new warriors. They're always changing. Is it, is Are you talking about the guardians of the galaxy? How they've changed no, them? There is a set of... There is a new set of heroes that are coming out in the comic series, I believe, called the New Warriors. Huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's Snowflake and uh, Safe Space. I am not kidding. And there is also a girl with a magic backpack. I'm not opposed to the to the so latter. Alrighty then. <laughs> but I'm but I am saying that the comic industry is. V- struggling well they are struggling. yeah they are batman versus uh fortnite dear <laughs> lord yeah that's, that a, that's a, a real published thing yeah, yeah it's it's coming out very shortly <laughs> they, they announced it just the other day batman and fortnite is a thing in comic books now so there you go <laughs> Congratu- congratulations everybody no but but print media on a whole is struggling um, oh yeah, not not just comic books. So they're, I think what they're doing is they're trying to find ways to kind of you know uh, reinvigorate the, the fan base into into getting because you know what, Comicsology is has changed a lot of things. The Marvel Unlimited app, the DC Universe when it was a thing, you know, a lot of people are are looking at digital media and and getting their comic books that way there's there's still a lot of people that actually want to have the comic book in their hands but it's it's getting that group is is shrinking you know it seems by the day and that's why you see so many comic book stores going out of business also so um and this is pre-covid stuff so it's it's uh it's tough so you know but I, I gotta look into New Warriors because that <laughs> I just I just gotta that should be your out. next topic. Yeah, I, I gotta find out what that's about. Dora the Explorer, the comic book, and Boots. I can't. I can't. I don't know. I can't. It's it's crazy. An, an extended universe is not meant to be part of the core universe. It's meant to make homages to the core universe. Great example, actually. Uh, the Animatrix. That show existed. Yes, I remember that. I've never seen that show, but I know it existed. And it takes place after Matrix 1, I believe. Or it has a bunch of shorts. Yes, that that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is one character from the Animatrix that shows up in The Matrix 2. He has less than five minutes of screen time. And then he's gone. And that is what an extended universe is supposed to be. It should be it is, an addendum to the movies. Not Yes. Not, not, a, not a key factor. Right. I think that's where we're going away from. In terms of all these new properties, they're they're no longer extended universe. They're now core universe, and that's where that's where we're falling into problems, especially with the lay person that is a casual fan. That's where those those things are gonna impact people the most. It's what Star Wars all of this exactly. Um. Can I come back later? <laughs> well, there's a meme that I posted on the Instagram, and it was like, you know, this is this is me when my coworkers start asking me about Star Wars, and it shows um the guy from Pacific Rim with like this whole big whiteboard behind him, and he's looking crazy. Three hours later, still talking about it, you know. <laughs> but that that's that's what it is, you know. It, it's just it. Star the Star Wars universe is expanding to the point where it's getting maybe a little bit too big for its own good. But you know what? I mean, if you tell compelling stories, people will come. That's that's all I have to say. Yeah. You know? I mean it's uh you can either have 
a lot of garbage or a little bit of something beautiful. I'd rather have that little bit than what Star Wars is pumping out, that lot of garbage. Yeah, I totally agree. All right. Um, on that note, I think we're going to... Um, I think we're, we're 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 probably done with this. We could probably talk about this for another three hours, to be quite honest. You know? And you were passionate on the properties. Absolutely. Maybe what we have to do is we'll, you, you're going to have to come back at some point, um, and we can continue this discussion because, like I said, there is there is so much that we can talk about Star Wars. I mean, I think um, for it's us, okay. we were we were actually planning on doing a, a rewatch of the trilogy movies and kind of like doing a revisit. And I think we're still going to do that eventually. Um, I'll come back in five years when I'm finished understanding the entirety of Clone Wars and part of Rebels. It's going to take you at least that long. But by that time, there'll be like 50 more shows that you have to watch. So, um, Ahsoka Tano, Obi-Wan Kenobi. There's um, Acolytes. This, that, the other. Oh, you forget about Cassian Andor. Cassian Andor. <laughs> He's got his own show. So, the Bad Batch, which is something that's coming out very, very shortly. I think in July. Hey, um, do, do you know where they came from? Uh, I'll give you one guess. Rebels. No, no Clone Wars. Clone Wars. Wars. I'm sorry. Yes. Clone Wars. Clone Wars. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of stuff there. But. Like I said, that's gonna be that's gonna be. Once you catch up, we'll have you back and see if uh, <laughs> see if anything changes with um, your perception. With other hand, yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, Hira, I'd like I'd like to thank you for coming on the show. It was super super fun. It was great. Oh, this, the invitation was flattering. Yes, and um, for everyone else that's watching, thank you for being on this journey with us today. Um, we hope that again you subscribe, rate, review, and tell all your friends about the podcast. That's the best thing that you can do for us. Um, and so, until then, again, we'd like to thank Hero for joining us on the podcast. Thanks. Woo. Woo. And from all of us here, this is your host, Walt. AJ. Eli. And may our paths cross again. Can you never get that right, dude? No, I can get that right. <laughs> I'm going to start saying it from now on. If you don't, nope. I will usurp you. I literally just got it. I got it. But it took you forever. No, All right. <laughs> Later, Pete. May the force be with you. Always. <laughs>